Hey everyone, welcome to Learn Today IGCSC. Whether you're a student preparing for your exams or a teacher looking for a quick reference, this video will provide you with a complete overview of the formulas you need before you get into your exams. So grab yourself a piece of paper and let's get started. In this video, we'll cover the six main topics outlined by the IGCSE curriculum. Now let's dive into the list of important formulas in chapter 1. And in this video, I will only be focusing on the subtopics which requires formulas to be memorized. Now let's talk about motion. Speed is a fundamental concept in physics representing how quickly an object covers a certain distance. And you can obtain speed by calculating distance over time. And likewise, for average speed, you're going to do the total distance traveled over the total time taken. Acceleration measures how quickly the velocity of an object changes. So you can obtain by dividing the change in velocity, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over time, we can calculate the acceleration. Moving on to mass and weight, there is a very simple formula to calculate weight whereby weight is the force experienced by an object due to the gravity. Next off, density is very simple, you're just going to need the mass of an object divided by its volume. As for forces, we're going to look at Hooke's law which explains the relationship between the force exerted on a spring and its extension. Moving on into Newton's second law of motion, F equals to ma. Now, Newton's second law of motion plays a significant role in understanding forces. So it says that the net force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. Now, when it comes to the turning effect of forces, we use the concept of the moment of a force. This is calculated by multiplying the force by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. Next up, into momentum. Impulse is a key concept in relation to momentum. So you will be able to calculate impulse by multiplying force and time. And the resultant force is determined by the change in momentum divided by the change in time. Now moving into energy. When an object is in motion, it possesses kinetic energy and when an object is in a position or height above the ground, it possesses potential energy. Kinetic energy is calculated by 1 over 2 times mass times velocity squared and potential energy is calculated by mass, gravitational field strength which is 10 on earth and height of the object above the ground. Now, work is closely related to energy. It is the product of the force applied to an object and the distance traveled in the direction of that force. When it comes to energy resources, we are interested in their efficiency. The percentage efficiency can be obtained by dividing the useful energy output by the total energy input and multiplying it by 100%. And likewise, we can use the same formula but just switch it to power. And speaking of power, power is the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred. This can be calculated by dividing either the work done or the energy transferred by the time taken. And the last subtopic for this chapter would be pressure. Pressure is defined as the force per unit area and alternatively the pressure at a particular depth within a liquid or gas can be determined by using the height of the fluid column through its density and the gravitational field strength. And there you have it, we've covered an extensive list of formulas from chapter 1. Okay, now we will be diving into chapter 2, Thermal Physics. First off, make sure you know how to convert temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. For this, we use the formula temperature in Kelvin equals to temperature in Celsius plus 273. Next off is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is an important concept in the study of gases. It states that the product of pressure and volume is constant as long as the temperature remains constant. So you can express this in the formula PV equals constant. 
Next, specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by a certain amount. It is crucial parameter in thermal physics. The formula for specific heat capacity is given by C equals to change of energy E over mass times theta, which is the change of temperature. Or we could also write it like this, change of energy equals to MC theta. And now it brings us to the end of our chapter 2 discussion on thermal physics, which is very short and simple. Now, chapter 3 waves. Okay, so let's dive into the formulas that you are going to require. Wave equation. So the velocity of a wave can be determined by multiplying its frequency by its wavelength, which is represented by lambda. Next, you'll be calculating refractive index. So N represents the refractive index and it can be calculated by dividing the sine of the angle for incidence by the sine of the angle of refraction. Alternatively, when you know the critical angle, which is C, you can find the refractive index N by taking the reciprocal of the sine of the critical angle. Next, for the electromagnetic spectrum, it encompasses various types of waves. So make sure you know all the types of waves, which is microwave, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray, and gamma ray. Though this topic doesn't involve specific formulas, make sure you know the value of speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Now let's explore some formulas for sound. First off, you need to know that human beings can hear the sound in frequency range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And lastly, the speed of sound in air is approximately 330 to 350 meters per second. Okay, we have covered all the important formulas related to waves in chapter 3. Okay, now we are going to explore the important formula and equations that you need to know in chapter 4 of electricity and magnetism. Electric current is the flow of electric charge over time. The formula for electric circuit is I equals to Q over T. Next, electromotive force, EMF. The formula E equals to W over Q represents the relationship between EMF, work done, and the charge Q transferred. So the formula R equals the voltage of a current is used in order to find the resistance. Next off, you have got electrical energy and power. Electrical power P is the rate at which the electrical energy is transferred or used. The formula P equals to IV and E equals to IVT, where P represents power, I is the current, V is the potential difference, and T is time, will assist you in calculating power consumption and energy transfer in circuits. Okay, next off for electric circuit. Circuit components serve specific purposes and can be combined creatively to design circuits tailored for unique application. For example, using two resistors as a potential divider can be helpful in creating specific voltage ratios. So the equation R1 over R2 equals to V1 over V2 will allow you to calculate and adjust voltage levels as needed. So this is the transformer equation whereby Vp represents the primary voltage, Vs is the secondary voltage, and P represents the number of turns in the primary coil, and Ns represents the number of turns in the secondary coil. Next up, we have the efficiency equation. This formula helps us to determine the efficiency of a transformer based on its primary and secondary currents and voltages. And lastly, you've got the formula for the power dissipation calculation, whereby P equals to current square multiplied by resistance. And that wraps up our chapter 4. Moving on to chapter 5. So actually, there is no particular formulas that you need to remember in this chapter, but you should be able to know how to write your nuclear notation. And the most important part 
or calculation in this chapter would be calculating your half-life. I would recommend you to try out some past year questions or get the reference book from our platform to try on these essential questions and get the step-by-step -step guidance into answering your past year questions. Now moving on into our last chapter of the syllabus which is space physics. Since this is a new addition to your syllabus, I hope you are doing enough of practice and familiarizing yourself with the type of questions that may come out for this chapter. So there is a key formula that helps us calculate the orbital velocity of a planet. This is the formula V equals to 2 pi r over t. Now moving on to stars and the universe. So you should know that one light year is equal to 9.5 times 10 to the power of 15 meter. Please remember that one light year is a measurement for distance and not time. And finally, the subtopic of the universe, make sure you know what is Hubble constant's value and the equation to calculate the age of the universe. And that concludes our discussion on the important formulas to know in Chapter 1 to Chapter 6 in RGCSC Physics Syllabus. So remember that memorizing formulas alone is not sufficient for you to score in your RGCSC Physics. So please make sure that you are practicing enough and if you are not practicing enough, you can also get a set of 200 questions that we provide on our platform. This comes with step-by-step -step guide and answer. So this way, you will be able to see how to solve your IGCC physics questions in details. Thank you and hope to see you again in our next video.